next video here in our trig unit, we're going to learn how to calculate trig function values when given a point on the terminal side of an angle. So in this case, what I am looking for is the sine of this angle, right? And the angle stops on the terminal ray. Terminal meaning, you know, the ray that it stops on. And on that terminal ray is this point 3 comma 4. So that point is over 3. This is a right triangle. Over 3 and up 4. So let me draw this reference triangle over here. Kind of draw it separately here. Doesn't have to be perfect. But we go up 4 over 3. I don't really like that. I'll draw it again. A little bit more realistic this time. It's a little better. So we're going up 4 and over 3. And in this case, I am looking for the uh, trig function value, the sine of this angle that goes all the way around. All right, but really to find the sine of that angle, just look at this reference angle in here. And at the end, we'll figure out whether it's positive or negative using that little trick. So let's say that's our angle. In this case, I need to find the sine of that angle. And uh, the sine of an angle, as you know, is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse in this case, if you do Pythagorean theorem, is 5. So the sine of our angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Now this happens to be a first quadrant angle, so all trig functions are positive. So this is a final answer right here, 4 over 5. Let's try a couple more. Okay, here we have a triangle that I want to draw. And the x value here is... The x value is negative 5, and the y value is radical 11. And we are asked to find the cosine of that angle. Now the angle goes down like this. All right, it's a th second quadrant. Remember, all students take calculus. So in quadrant 2, only sine and cosecant are positive. So this answer at the end is going to be a negative on it. But let's just figure this out really quickly. If we put theta there, the cosine of theta, as you remember, is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So our adjacent is negative 5. So cosine of theta is negative 5 over the hypotenuse. Here's our hypotenuse. So let's do Pythagorean theorem. So we'll go 5 squared. Or if you wanted to, you can do negative 5 squared. It doesn't matter. Plus radical 11 squared equals h squared. This is positive 25. 11 is equal to h squared. This is 36. Square root of both sides, you get 6. So your hypotenuse is 6 units long. So you notice that this is not the unit circle. Right, if I created a circle out of this thing, that's not a very good one, but you get my point. The radius is 6, so it's not at all in the unit circle. Uh, so the hypotenuse, we said, is 6. And again, just be careful, right? Make sure that you have the right positive or negative value. This is a second quadrant angle. In the second quadrant, your x value is negative. And as you know, your cosine value, your cosine is going to be the adjacent, which is your x, divided by hypotenuse. Now, in the unit circle, it was just the x value, but that's, that was only because the hypotenuse was 1. Now, our hypotenuse is not necessarily 1 because these are not necessarily in the unit circle. So you got to be careful here. So your answer there was negative 5 over 6. Let's move on. All right, again, draw a triangle. I've got a triangle here. Looks something like this. And I go left radical 17 and down 8. Remember, all students take calculus. So in quadrant 1, everything is positive, sine, cosine, tangent. In quadrant 2, only sine is positive and cosecant, of course. 
quadrant three, tangent and cotangent are positive, and in quadrant four, cosine and secant are positive. So this is a quadrant three angle, obviously. And as you can see here, the tangent is going to be positive. So this is good. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite, so tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. Negative over negative is a positive. Can't leave a radical in the bottom. So let's just rationalize. Let me get rid of those negatives. I don't need those. So if we rationalize, we multiply top and bottom by radical 17. So I get 8 root 17 over 17. And that's my answer. The tangent of theta is 8 root 17 over 17. If the 8 and the 17 can be simplified, you would simplify, but they cannot be. Next up, let's draw a nice little triangle here. Right? If we pretend like this is a right triangle, I have I've gone over 15 and I've gone up 5. All right, x comma y. So the cosecant is remember the sign is opposite over hypotenuse, so cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So if this is our theta in here, hypotenuse not sure what that is right now, but opposite is 5. So the cosecant of theta is h over 5. I actually need to find h, so let's do Pythagorean theorem. So this is 225 plus 25 equals h squared. That's 250 equals h squared. I'll take it over here. h is equal to the square root of 250. That needs to be simplified. I know that 250 is 25 times 10. So if I break 250 up in that way, I get the square root of 5, excuse me, the square root of 25 times the square root of 10. So my hypotenuse is 5 root 10. So I'll put that right here, 5 root 10. And this one's kind of nice because the 5s are going to cancel on top and bottom. You get 5 and 5, leaving you with just radical 10 as your answer. Moving on. All right, quick triangle here. Again, just pretend like this terminal side has a little right triangle as its hypotenuse. So let's draw this thing over here. And I get, let's see, radical 5 to the right and then down 2. So here's theta. Remember, all students take calculus. And what that means is cosine and secant are positive in the fourth quadrant. This is secant, so it's going to be a positive answer. All right, and if we figure this out, you're going to see why it's a positive. The secant is defined as 1 over cosine. Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is hypotenuse over adjacent. The adjacent is radical 5, so the secant of theta is hypotenuse over radical 5. I just need to find the hypotenuse. So let's go negative 2 squared plus radical 5 squared equals hypotenuse squared. This is 4 plus 5 equals h squared. That's 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So my hypotenuse is 3. So the secant of theta is 3 over radical 5. I'll rationalize that. I get 3 root 5 over 5. And that comes out positive. Moving on. Last one. I have a third quadrant angle. In quadrant three, I know that tangent and cotangent are positive, so this one's going to be positive. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. If tangent is opposite over adjacent, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So let's draw a triangle. I've got something like this. It's a right triangle. I'm getting a little sloppy here. And it goes left 4, down 7. The cotangent of that angle is adjacent over opposite. 
So it's 4 over 7. Tangent and cotangent have nothing to do with hypotenuse. So it doesn't matter that this thing is missing. It makes no difference. If I wanted to know the sine or cosine or cosecant or secant, you would have to find that hypotenuse. But uh, So there you go. There are a couple quick examples on how to find these values when given a point on the terminal side of an angle. Thanks for watching.